Hi, for this video, I want to discuss some logical fallacies that you will see in common language. These will show up a lot of times in mathematics courses when you are studying logic. So the first one that I want to talk about is ad hominem. Ad hominem is an argument that attacks the person making the argument, ignoring the argument itself. So it could be an argument that is completely valid, but instead of attacking what the person is saying, it attacks the person directly. So for example, Sarah says that there is evidence of global warming, but Sarah is only in elementary school, so she can't be right. So in this, Sarah is being attacked by the fact that she is in elementary school, so she has said something that does have evidence that points towards it happening, um, but you attacked Sarah rather than the argument itself. You'll see this a lot in politics where one candidate will attack the other candidate and not necessarily look at the argument. So ad hominem attacks the person rather than the argument. All right, the next one I want to talk to you about is appeal to ignorance. Appe appeal to ignorance is an argument that assumes something is true because it hasn't been proven to be false. So you'll see this a lot of time in religion, um, or it could be things of... Um, things of another nature that you're trying to prove, but there's no evidence for it. So an example of this would be no one has proven that the photo isn't the Loch Ness Monster, so it must be the Loch Ness Monster. So the burden of proof is on the other person, and so since it's never been proven to be false, therefore it has to be true. All right, appeal to authority. An argument that attempts to use the authority of a person to prove a claim. While authority can strengthen an argument, if other experts don't also share the opinion or the authority is irrelevant to the argument, then it can cause problems. So the example that I have down here is a diet high in bacon can be healthy because Dr. Atkins said so. So while there is... Um, information that could point towards something. If you eat only bacon, it's probably not good for you and you will probably have other health risks because you're not getting enough nutrients um, and you're eating too much fats. So this is one of those things that you will see a lot that people will argue something because of the authority of the person, but not everybody is necessarily an expert even when they claim to be. So watch out for this one. This is one that I see quite a bit that happens. People will believe something just because somebody in an authority um, area has said it to be true. Appeal to consequence. An appeal to consequence is an argument that concludes a premise is true or false based on whether the consequences are desirable or not. So for example, I don't believe my friend lied to me because if she lied, then our friendship would end and I don't want that to happen. So the appeal to consequence is you're trying to get something to be true or something to be false based on the outcomes, whether you want it or not. So appeal to consequence. Next one is false dilemma. A false dilemma is an argument that falsely frames the argument as an either-or choice without allowing for other options. So an example of this would be vote for me or live through four more years of higher taxes. Um, it's not always one way or the other. There could be other alternatives, but when you look at a false dilemma, you are pa painting it as I am either right or I am wrong or either this is going to happen or that is going to happen when there are other outcomes that are possible. So false dilemma falsely frames it as an either or choice. Circular reasoning. Circular reasoning is an argument that relies on the conclusion to be true in order for the premise to be true. So you just kind of go around and round in a circle. So for example, only an untrustworthy person would run for office. Look how untrustworthy our politicians are for proof of this. So in order for um, this to be true, the politicians are untrustworthy and we would look at how they are the ones who run for office. So therefore, only untrustworthy person or untrustworthy people would run for office. Straw man argument is an argument that involves misrepresenting the argument in a less favorable way to make it easier to attack. 
So with this one, you add some kind of unfavorable outcome into it in order to make it seem like you don't want this to happen. So for example, the senator wants to increase funding for food stamps. He wants to take away hard-earned money from taxpayers to support lazy people. This isn't fair. So that's an example of a straw man argument where the senator may want to increase funding for food stamps because it's necessary and those people are working hard um, but they just still can't afford to live because the cost of living has gotten so high. There's a lot of different reasons for wanting to help other people. Um, but this was framed in a way to make it to where he wants to take away the hard-earned money from taxpayers in order to support lazy people. So be careful about straw man. This is something you'll see, again, a lot in politics. A lot of these are seen in politics. Couple more. Um, a post hoc a post hoc is an argument that claims since two things happened in sequence, the first must have caused the second. So for example, the oven was working fine until you used it, so you must have broken it. So even though there was maybe something that just died in between the last time it was used, you're now attacking the person and saying that they used it and now it's broken, so they must have broken it. So this one is that one must have caused the second one. And then the last one that I want to look at is correlation implies causation. And this is probably one of the most misused um, terms in statistics or in mathematics. Uh, just because there is a relationship between two things does not mean that the other one causes the one to happen. So this is correlation implies causation is an argument that claims that since two things are related, one must have caused the other. Often there are other variables that are not considered. So for example, the one that I have on here, and you can find many examples of this, um, life expectancy increases in societies with more doctors in the area. Therefore, having more doctors available will cause you to live longer. So it's not necessarily the case that having more doctors in the area will cause you to live longer. There are other things at play. Usually societies that have more access to doctors in the area um, also have more access to things like refrigeration and um, grocery stores with um, food that has been processed correctly. You've also got a lot more wealth in these areas. So a lot of times that is helping with the life expectancy. It's not just having more doctors in the area. It's not that simple. There are other variables that could be at play. Um, a lot of times when people find that there's a relationship between the two, they think that one causes the other. Uh, but the only way you can truly find out if something causes something else is through a randomized controlled experiment. You can't just look at the relationship and say, hey, there's a relationship, therefore um, it must have caused this to happen. So hopefully this video helped you to look at some different types of logical fallacies that are used. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well. And as always, thanks for watching.